Hey there, hens and roosters. Welcome back. It's Chris from Good Roads. I hope everybody's doing well during quarantine, staying safe. In the last video in this series, we made a tool to bend edge wire, and in this video, we're going to put it to use. We're going to bend our edges and attach them to our base sheet. And the first step is going to be a little bit of prep work. Edge wire comes spooled on a roll, and what that means is when you take it off the roll, it's got a little bit of a bend to it still, and that can make it kind of hard to bend into the proper shape. So the first thing that we need to do is try to get it a little bit more flat. This will give us a nice place to start from when we bend the wires to shape and make our lives just a little bit easier. I did this by just running the edge wire over the side of my workbench, putting a little bit of pressure in the opposite direction of the bend. I even found a convenient little dent in one spot that I could seat the wire in, and it made it really easy to make sure that I was keeping the wire profile flat to make sure that I was bending it in the right direction. Once the wire was fairly straight, it was time to start bending. The base sheet is going to be the template for our wire, so I worked off of it as a reference. Originally I was going to do a full wrap, which means the edges go all the way around the perimeter of the board. But looking at my tail shape, I think some of those curves and shapes are going to be a little bit too aggressive for the methods that I have available. And with that in mind, I decided to dial it back to a three quarter wrap, where the edges start on the nose of the board and wrap all the way around the edges, but don't continue around the tail. Using the base sheet as a reference, I roughly measured out the amount of wire that I was going to need for the board and cut it to length, leaving myself a couple of extra inches on the ends, just in case. My plan was to start at the center of the nose and bend the wire around to both sides. To give myself a reference point, I marked the center of the nose and the center of my length of wire. If I kept those marks lined up, my curves would stay aligned with the base sheet and make my life much easier. And at this point, there's nothing left but to do it. So I grabbed my homemade wire bending tools, started getting to work. I would bend a little bit, check my work against the base, bend a little bit more, check again, bend and check, bend and check, slowly moving out from the center as the edges started to take shape. Now, my board has this big square shovel-shaped nose, and when I got into the corners of that shape, I hit a snag. The tang flanges on the edge wire started hitting each other before the radius of my corner was tight enough. This prevented me from bending the wire to the right shape. So I marked off which flanges were near that bend, and cut them so that they would be small enough to allow me to make the shape I designed. Now this decreases the amount of material holding the edges in place at those two points, those two corners of the nose, and it could cause a weak spot. But I think there's still enough meat left in the flanges to hold them in place. And aside from hitting any trees or rocks, that's not a part of the board that I imagine is going to get a lot of wear and tear anyway. So even though I think it'll probably be okay, fingers crossed just in case. Once the tangs were cut down, I sanded off the burrs and got back to bending. I'm still trying to find a good method for using this tool, but one thing that I did find that was useful was to plant the end of one of the handles on my workbench. This helped keep the tool steady and allowed me to feed wire through as I was bending. 
I found this much easier than moving the tool along the wire, and the added stability really made a difference. After a while, the nose of the board was as good as I was going to be able to get it. With very little pressure, the edge wire butted right up against the curves in the base sheet, and they fit tightly. The side cuts of the board have way more gentle, gradual curves, and there isn't much bending required there at all, so I clamped my edges in place and marked where I wanted them to end. Then I cut off the excess wire. Then it was time to attach the edges to the base sheet. Using my marks from earlier for alignment, I clamped the edge wire to the base and started tacking them down with super glue, gluing every third flange or so. While that first round of glue was drying, I moved down to the other end of the board and, using a razor, cut small recesses for the ends of the edge wire to fit into so that they would be nice and flush with the base where they ended. With that done, it was back to clamping and gluing. Partway through, I remembered I had bought a bunch of binder clips to use as clamps for this. They probably wouldn't have been strong enough for the more drastic curves up by the nose, but they were plenty strong for holding the edges in place along the side cut radius of the board. Just clip the edge down, push it in so it's snug against the base sheet, and glue it in place. Once one side was done, I moved on to the other side, again using my stronger clamps for the more aggressive curves and the binder clips to fill out the rest. After the glue had dried, I removed the clamps, and as a precaution, I went over the glue surfaces with 80 grit sandpaper, just to make sure there was a good, rough bonding surface for the resin when we get around to the layout. And with that, it's done, and it looks good. There's one or two places that I might have to fill in with some spare P-Tex before the base grind, but for the most part, the edges and the base sheet butt right up against each other with no gaps. Not bad for my first time. And that's it. That's the first layer of our layup squared away, and we're that much closer to having a final board. It's pretty exciting because up till now, we've been making all these different components, and none of them have started to come together to make anything looking like a snowboard. This is the first finished sheet in what is going to be the sandwich of our composite snowboard. So I don't know about you guys, but I find that pretty exciting. And from here, we're gonna continue on with the rest of our snowboard build. Up next, I think we're gonna go back and play with some resin, do some sidewall work. If you like the video, if you're interested in the project, subscribe. We're gonna be going all the way through the process of building my first snowboard together, along with a bunch of other really cool, interesting board sport DIY type content right here. If you got any questions, ideas, wanna talk about anything, leave a comment below. There was some really cool discussion on the poured urethane sidewall video. Made me really happy to see everybody chiming in and discussing different techniques, and that was really, really cool to see. So, any questions, get them down there. We'll talk about it. Thanks, as always, for coming along on the journey. I enjoy your company. I enjoy your support. I hope you're having fun with it. And until next time, I'll see you soon.